from 25 until 29 September 2017, we at the Auction House Künke will be holding our autumn auctions in Osnabrück. Since 2017 is the Reformation year, we are proud to present our catalogue 297 featuring the Opitz collection, which is dedicated to coins and medals on the occasion of the Reformation and Protestantism. Please join us in reconstructing the impact of Lutheranism on the Roman German Empire by means of these gorgeous coins and medals. It was in a world of the late Middle Ages when a Bohemian theologian called Jan Hus was burned to death on 6 July 1415, despite the fact that a German king had guaranteed him safe conduct. It was argued that such promises did not have to be kept while dealing with heretics. Incidentally, the beliefs of Jan Hus did not differ too much from those of Luther. He was merely unlucky enough to be born too early. No prince protected him against the church's attacks. Hus thus died at the stake. We can see him here, shortly before his execution, wearing the Korotha, a high paper hat heretics had to wear in the 16th century. The model for this medal from the 18th century was created around 1530, which is the time when Protestants presented their statement of faith to the emperor. They interpreted Hus as a predecessor of Luther. That is why the inscription on the reverse reads in translation after the course of 100 years, you will answer to God and me. This depiction intends to say the same. Whose means the goose in Bohemian. Consequently, these words were put into the mouth of the executed. Today, you are frying goose, but from its ashes a swan will rise. This swan was of course equated to Luther. And Luther is depicted on the obverse. He is holding a burning candle in his hand, and the symbol of the light of truth enlightens the statement of the holy book. His opposite, Frederick III, Elector of Saxony, is overwhelmed. He is swearing an oath to this new light with one hand raised. There is a reason for this. Luther is freeing him from the demands made by an institutional church which was loyal to the Pope. Frederick III, whose marvelous portrait can be seen on the Schautaler of 1522, was probably happy to do so, as Luther's message supported his political interests. With regards to time, after all, we are right in the middle of a development known as territorialization. It describes the transition from a medieval feudal state to an early modern territorial state. In other words, every ruler tried to directly control the people living in their territory, and the church was in their way. Well, it's safe to assume that Frederick III, like all his contemporaries, was a devout man. The fact that a learned clergyman like Martin Luther claimed that the church was interpreting word of God in a wrong way meant that he could take action against the institutional church with a clean conscience and announce verbum domini manit in eternum, the word of the Lord endures forever. The Reformation gave the Protestant princes and cities the opportunity to take possession of the clerical properties even though this appropriation could take a long time. It took almost a century, for instance, until the Hessian Landgrave had the rich Hersfeld Abbey in their control. In the end, they substituted the abbot with an administrator from their own house, only to defend the pure teaching of Luther, of course. At least, that is what this half Reichsthaler from 1621 says. We can see a hand risen to swear an oath, and the legend advises all the vowing subjects believe.
but watch who you believe. This was good advice to every subject at the time, since those in power were not interested in a social change in the Christian sense, but rather in extending their own power. The Anabaptists of Münster had to learn this lesson too. They had dreamt of a community of equals, of a kind of communism. What they wanted exactly, we only know little of that, as it was the winners who were writing history. But let's have a look at which messages are delivered by the Anabaptists of Münster on this double taler. There are, of course, no images, as the Anabaptists took the prohibition of images of the Old Testament very seriously. The word became flesh and is dwelling among us. Can this mean anything other than that the time to realize the kingdom of God is not in some distant future, but right now and today? No one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. The statement disputes every institutional church's right to decide who is chosen and who is not. The Spirit of God is not subject to any clerical authority. But the biggest presence lies in this sentence, one king upright above all. This is an attack on the claim to power of all princes of the Roman German Empire and none of them wanted to put up with this. Even though the poor were rebelling in the name of the Reformation, the great reformers were on the side of those in power. Luther himself wrote a polemic paper in 1525 against the murderous, thieving hordes of peasants. It read, One should smite, strangle and stab them, secretly or publicly, whosoever can, just as one must slay a mad dog. It was always about power, similarly so in 1530, when the princes wanted to force the emperor to accept their new statement of faith by submitting the Confessio Augustana. When he did not do so, the Protestant princes formed the Schmalkaldic League in order to fight their cause with weapons. Here we can see a taler from the Schmalkaldic League from the year 1542. The obverse depicts the Elector of Saxony. The reverse shows the Landgrave of Hesse. The two were the joint leaders of the Schmalkaldic League. The prince's fight only ended in the year 1555 with a compromise we know as the Peace of Augsburg. This half Hamburg Portugaleuse at five ducats of 1755 shows why this peace was so eagerly anticipated. The personifications of religion and abundance are holding the city code of arms. During the war, even during a religious war, no one makes good business. The peace after the Thirty Years' War was equally welcome, as shown by this magnificent medal from 1748. The city of Münster had it minted on occasion of the centenary of the Peace of Westphalia. The obverse depicts Germania greeting the new day dawning in peace. But this Germany, Germania, did not actually exist anymore. The Peace of Westphalia had brought the end of territorialization. Now the princes were ruling the territories without the church or the emperor intervening. The fact that they were also deciding on their subjects' confession of faith was no more than a nice side effect. Even then, religion was already working as a stalking horse for highly profane interest, and this has never changed. In 1917, towards the end of World War I, the Bavarian Mint struck a medal on which a grim-looking Dr. Martin Luther is propagating the persistence of the Germans. The willingness to sacrifice of the German people on the battlefield and at the home front is conjured up with the words, A mighty fortress is our God. After all, even the innocent church bells had been melted down to become grenades. Religion cuts both ways. Or, as Friedrich Heiler, a German scholar of religious studies, put it in 1959, 
Religion is not just something holy, wonderful, comforting, life-giving, but also something dangerous. We can find religious states of intoxication and outbreaks of religious fanaticism all over. Countless times in history, religion has asserted itself with violence, fire and sword. We at the Auction House Künke are happy to invite you to our Autumn Auction of 2017. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us.